Hello and welcome to the MBS show episode number 520. I am your host Norman Sanzo and we got some news for you this week. So let's not dilly dally and hop right into it. So first up is My Little Pony role playing game in a jam adventure now up. Renegade has listed up the in a jam adventure they announced a way back months ago. It has a bunch of cute OC ponies on the cover that are being called the Renegade Stick. I like that name. I like that name. By the artists that work on it. I'm popping all the infos on it below along with more pictures of the DM screen that this one includes. You can order it over here. Uh, a limited time order will come with a PDF copy of the My Little Pony role-playing game in a jam adventure at no additional cost. Any order cancellation involving a free PDF will not refund the price of the physical book minus the price of the PDF. Free. So, yeah. The PDF will be added to your account upon release. All, all's not well in Winnipeg. Okay, all's not well in Winnipeg. Mm. Okay, Winnipeg. <laughs> uh, come to see the Zap Apple Bloom or <laughs> Sorry. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> Bloom. Not only is the Zep Apple Jam not going to be ready, but the tourists who came to see the Zep Apple Bloom are heartbroken and about to leave empty hooved. Can Granny Smith find some ingenious pony to figure out what's going on? You and your friends get to solve the <clears throat> solve a Zep Apple mystery and maybe even make some new friends in this adventure of the Marvel Pony role-playing game. In a Gem is a perfect In a Gem is a perfect follow-up adventure to the introduction story Feeling Thunder found in the core rule. Oh, called rule book. Oh boy, mine. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna skip a lot of stuff because I don't want to spray my voice too much. So, what you'll get in the um a jam in <laughs> oh, a jam in time in a jam. Yes, what you get in a jam is uh adventure booklet for first level characters adventure take place in Winnipeg where the Zep apple trees have stopped blooming. This is kind of confusing for me because I always thought that Zep apple trees are somewhat exclusive to Ponyville but not really I guess so that's a mystery to solve. Uh, encounter NPC non-playable characters like Granny Smith and Candy Apple. Uh, for, for panel bonus steel a uh, bonus site GM screen with beautiful My Little Pony artwork on the outer panels. GM screen includes reference table and key rule to streamline play. So, um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, at a glance, four panel GM screen adventure for one level character for the end up. So, um, the GM screen. So, this is what you'll get. And this is what you put in front of your uh, game table. So you, you have your game table here. And you put the screen there. And you get some infos like, um, okay, uh, conditions. Okay, what, what conditions do you want to... Uh, not really, I'm sorry, how about this? Um, this screen is just a guide for you to put in front of your screen 
as a GM, you, you, you put this and then you'll have your notes at the back. And then uh, you'll have these things like, okay, um, a monster puts your players to sleep. So their condition is asleep. So what does asleep mean? So it explains it there. Instead of going through the call rule book and going through pages, uh, trying to find like page 199 and just reading through. Uh, so you'll have this instead. So it's a quick uh, reference guide. And okay, what kind of dice do you have? Okay, this is how the 6 look, the uh, 12, the 8, the 4s, and so on. And this is a Dutendi, so you have those guides there. So you have everything ready. So uh, as a DM or the GM, this is kind of important for you. And also, maybe you don't really need this because you're kind of a seasoned vet. So what you usually do is uh, you take some post-it notes, Post it up to the board on your end and says like, oh, okay, um, I'll have my player who name is Trixie and she has this certain trait about her. Okay, for this adventure, I want to have Trixie meet someone and do something. So you'll, you'll, you'll put it on your post-it note, uh, stick it to the board and just say, okay, um, as a reminder, like when Trixie comes to town, Remember to guide the players towards the inn or something like that. I mean, that's an example of a scenario that could happen and why the GM board is important for you. Uh, technically, you can do it digitally. They are there. But sometimes having something physical would be really awesome. So, yeah, uh, the DS3 looks good too. So, yeah, if you do play a lot, so that's awesome. And the call rule book is fine too. Uh, with an adventure, yeah, with a starting adventure, this is really fun. <coughs> so anyway, um, moving on to the next news, a uh, new G One soundtrack, My Little Pony theme song, the remix featuring, um, four new remixes. Yeah, um, I, I listened to this one, so, um, let's see what they have to write up. As a follow-up to the 6 EP released two weeks ago, Hasbro has now released a 14-track album, My Little Pony theme song, the remix featuring some more remix of G1 My Little Pony Friendship and My, My Little Pony and Friends theme song. So, I've listened to this and I have to say it was pretty interesting. Um, it's basically the G1 intro theme song um remix into well modern themes uh you you have something like uh, 80s remix 90s pop edm acoustics speed up lo-fi and so on and they're they're pretty fun if you enjoy listening to the original theme song they they did a good job with just cranking out a lot of awesome stuff with this one so uh, go listen to your preferred music outlet um spotify apple music youtube music uh deezer tidal yeah so go go to those places to enjoy listening to the music and i'm surprised that youtube music is listed because like i mentioned before um i thought hasbro and youtube you were not friends, but I, I guess they are now, so that's good. So next up is a uh, new pony. <coughs> oh, okay, I'm gonna pause here for a bit and try not to die. Welcome back. So anywho, um, new pony donut shop, Pon Pushka opens in Belarus. Donut anyone? A new shop will be very, sorry, a new shop with a very pony mascot has appeared in, over in Belarus, where they focus on donuts. They also cover a bunch of other foods and drinks. If you happen to find yourself over there, the website shows it all off. So let's see. Okay. Um, I, I don't think I read Russian. That is. And 
From the looks of it, it's pretty cool. Got no idea about the mascot and what's their postie, but I do like this. Um, yeah, it's unique enough that it doesn't look similar to MLP, but it looks close enough to say that, hey, this is the pony and the pony has stuff. So yeah, this is all cool. So uh, I'm guessing we got milkshake, chocolate milkshake, mint milkshake, and also cherry, probably. We got some donuts. And yeah, glaze covered stuff. I, I don't know. But yeah, um, this looks fun. So uh, you guys who actually tried it, do let me know. I, I want to know, it, it, are they any good? Uh, do they taste good? Is the price okay? And whatnot. <coughs> Trixie and Lara Prashi arrive Friday, July. It's out already. I've mentioned before this. I'm so late. Uh, symbioteasing Trixie releasing release date for the 28th of July. She will appear, join Lyra as adorable ponies in just two days oh boy so anywho yes if you are interested uh head up to the website to go get them i guess can you get them on the website huh are they not Uh, My Little Pony, yes, they are there. I think you can buy it on their website because they have $30. Yeah, you can buy it on their website. That's cool. So, what else did I really remember? Yeah. Mentioned before. Um, plush are available at their website for $30 and they're 20, 12 inches tall which is I have not bad and the quality looks pretty good and their design yeah I, I say it's worth the buy if you are interested oh boy I'm trying not to thus <coughs> But not least, Hasbro selling E1 Film and TV Studios to Lionsgate for 500 mil. Mm. In an effort to lower their overall debt, Hasbro has decided to let their E1 Film and TV Studios go after just four years of service. For those that haven't been paying attention during our G5 coverage over the years, they acquired <coughs> uh, they acquired part of E1 back in 2019 for 4 billion. Wow. These guys have been heavily involved in the overall planning for our jump from G4 to G5 as mentioned during World Screen event a few years ago where they mentioned reinventing the My Little Pony brand into what we have now. Back in April of 2022, Hasbro was dealing with a large fund called Alta Fox that was essentially looking to re- restructure their company by dropping the brand blueprint strategy which brought us such huge amount of digital content while that ended up failing in the end it doesn't seem like they are taking some of the recommended recommendation to heart by switching back to what we used to know as where they rely 
on third parties for their digital service instead of working on them in house. We, um, we will see where this goes for future pony content. Uh, for now, they already have you know, they already use studios like Atomic Cartoons and have truckloads of content planned for this year when it comes to colorful equine. So we definitely have plenty to munch on while we wait. So for you guys who got no idea, um I I think I did a brief summarization of E1. Uh basically what they are is they're kind of Hasbro's go to people to make cartoons. So back in the days, um, Hasbro relied on Studio B, who became, um, what was it again? I forgot. Boulder Media? No, that's a different company. But uh, back in the day, it was Studio B. They were based in Canada. So that's why you get a lot of Canadian voice actors and whatnot, because Canadian um, uh, company and whatnot. So, uh, back in 2019, Hasbro picked up E1 and divert a lot of their work toward there. So, having most of their stuff built in-house. And it seems that after the four years, um, things doesn't seem to be going well for them. And they're kind of restructuring, I guess. So, um, what do I have to say about the whole thing? It's kind of a mixed bag, really, because having the... How would, I, how would I even put this? Because I kind of get it why. Because they want to lower their debt. So by selling off stuff, they can lower their debt and put that in to, well, paying off their debt. So, like, they sold it for 500 mil, but they bought, they bought E1 back for 4 bill. So, that's not good. But at the same time, too, you have to also remember that within that 4 years, did they at least break even? If they did break even, then I say it's not that bad, but if they didn't, then that stock's really bad. So, what else can I say about this? I, I don't know, man. Like, it's usually... I'm trying to remember, because the, the movie division for Hasbro, um, Allspark Studios, okay, that's something else, because Allspark Studios, if I remember it, it's called Allspark Studios, um, they're the movie division for Hasbro. So what that means is that movies like um, the My Little Pony movie, uh, the Dungeons & Dragons movie, the Magic the Gathering cartoon probably, anime, whatever it is, or, you know, whatever... <coughs> whatever IP that has to do with Hasbro that is going to be turned into a movie will go there. And once there, they get to decide or they get to plan out, okay, here's what we're going to do with the movie and whatnot. And we have this branch of the company handle that. And if it's going to be turned into a TV show back then, uh, we'll do it under the E1 banner where we'll have this person here try to do this, try to do that, uh, do this, do that, market it and whatnot and see if it works. So, it's it's a very difficult balance to try and get the company going. And I, I guess the cartoon or the TV division didn't seem to be working. Because when you look at what we have now in terms of entertainment for from Hasbro, we only get ponies. And that's only via YouTube and Netflix. We we don't have anything 
more to add to their portfolio. We we don't have GI Joe. We don't have um, Pound Puppies or a uh, little Spread Shop. Pound Puppies are there. I think they're theirs. And we, we we don't have a lot of other content that can fill up the airspace with Hasbro product. And I usually go to Toys R Us and I see a lot of toys and the pony section has been obliterated. You you don't get a lot of toys. You don't get a lot of pony toys. And in the way I look at it is that uh, the pony footnote or the the pony splash is not there compared to G four. You have it on EVs. You have it on the YouTube. You have it on, uh, well, basically TVs. That's the most important one. As long as you get eyes on your brand, that's what matters, because it's exposed. It's exposed everywhere. People know ponies. When you see at the local Chinese knockoff night market, you see pony bags, and they're not G5 ponies. They're usually G4 ponies, no matter if the color is accurate or not. The art is still G4. And why? Because G4 has a lot of eyes looking at it. From the TVs and the reruns and whatever it is, like, that's what makes G4 kind of long and last. G5, I'm not saying that it's bad, but the only way that you get to see it is on Netflix. And Netflix is a fickle mistress. Uh, you get to see it on YouTube, but are, if you're not specifically looking for it, you won't, you won't be getting served for it. You, you know what I mean? <coughs> But anywho, um, that's business economics 101 aside. So anyway, I'm going to rest up for a bit and move on to the next topic. And the next topic is what have I been doing with my week? Last week, I was dying. Had a cold, had a cough, fevers and whatnot. Voice still out, as you can hear. I'm uh, not feeling my best had to do this because you guys hadn't had much uh, content and I would like to thank you all who commented on the videos and wish condolences. I, I know that video was not an easy one to view. I, I read, I, I replied and yeah, I, I understand. I'm, I'm sorry for that but it's one of those things where I kind of had to do it because it's not only a, how do I put it? It's not only a PSA or not really PSA. It's not only to housekeep to let you guys know what's going on, but it's also kind of a therapy thing for me because by me sharing my feelings, I hope I can get it off my chest and evolve or move on from. The incident, or at least cope, or at least uh, grow from it. So, I, I believe that it helped a bit. It helped a bit with the feelings that I have. But yeah, um, putting that aside, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And for this week, <coughs> as you can hear, not. 100% at health, yep, but I'm getting there. I'll, I'll save more stories for the next time when I um, start recording or something. So anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. I forgot, it's not Twitter anymore, it's X. And it doesn't 
mean crap because when you when you uh, right click on a picture let's say you enlarge the picture you right click on the picture you open it on to a separate um, window it still does say twitter it even has the bird so eh whatever don't care i'm still gonna call it twitter you know what twitter is go 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 and also please subscribe radio on itunes youtube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also stitch radio and also like our facebook page you can also catch us on live.com links will be in the show notes if you would like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show with every support you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous i would like to thank jacob lucky knight and master of like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway i have been norman sanzo and i'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the bs show see ya